Hi, and welcome back to Let's Play Medieval Engineers, the Let's Build series where we're working on the city castle Lothloria. Here, um, we're, we're uh, stuck in the throne room at the moment. I did some renovations after working on all those rocks and cliff faces and took a break to actually kind of polish up this room with some of the new decorative items they have available. I think it turned out pretty nice. We have some nice tables for some guests to sit at during some feasts. Uh, two thrones, one for a king, queen, king has to be higher. You know, it's just the way it is. So I'll go ahead and get out of this camera view, if I can remember how. There we go. So we, we got some flags hanging from the ceiling and uh, some also some banners back here. Plenty of torches. Kind of a shame they don't give off any light yet, but I think that'll be fixed later and it'll be a pretty nice effect. Hopefully it won't be too dark, but I can always add more lights later. That's pretty much all I did on the inside, uh, beyond just working on the cliff between episodes. If we go on out here, you can see the, the cliff is nice and uh, sealed off. Everything has texture. It uh, wraps all the way back around and remerges with the natural cliff face that was already generated from the developers. And so this this area is done. I'm going to be starting on this section today. This is going to be the lift up onto the actual plateau where the castle is. And I went ahead and smoothed out a little path down into the wooden areas because uh, we need one if we're going to be able to haul any supplies or anything like that. So basically I'm going to I'm going to be dragging up the walls first. And kind of define the area we had to work with. I did plan a little bit ahead and do some things. Oh, I should have remembered we had a structural integrity on. That could have fallen down. So we'll go ahead and build up some walls, make them a little thicker and heavier. We need to be able to hold up the weight, after all. All the way up. Come on. You can't really click and drag if they're partially in the terrain. I don't know if that's a des design feature or what, but it's just something. It's a, it makes things a little slower sometimes, but whatever. Let's see, and we'll go ahead and seal it like that. I think I want to have a 2x2 uh, two two block sized lift. That way we can carry a decent amount of people up and down and goods. On the... <laughs> my, my testing that I did on the lift mechanism went rather interestingly. Um, so. I don't know what they did with the structural integrity to make wooden objects a little bit more usable, but they also ended up making them almost too easily, like, they, they break things really easy. So it, the lift that I was testing on this design ends up pretty much, if I, if I reel it up too much, too quickly, it will hit the sides of the wall and actually just break the whole structure. I mean, b before the 19th I was trying to make battering rams and like testing that on stone walls and it was just pretty much bouncing off. But apparently all it takes is a small chunk of wood now and you just throw it at a stone wall and it will explode. So I thought that was a pretty interesting feature they added. The structure here is, is going to be pretty simple. I'm hoping. I haven't really pre-designed anything beyond just the lift mechanism and the actual cart, which I'll have to probably pull from the other my little test world that I have for some engineering uh, pieces. So we're going to just clear out some more terrain there. Put in a 
bottom. There we go. I'm gonna need a s thin wall piece for that area. Where am I? Okay, it doesn't want me to do anything there. Let's see if that effect... Eh, I don't know if I like that. No, I do not. I do not like that. I need to change that. Like, now. So, we'll go with a thin wall there. That way it works on that side. And then on this side, we will do the underhang that was originally there, like so. And connect that back up fully. Go ahead and get rid of some more of this terrain. So that way I can fit some more blocks in here, make sure everything's all nice and sound. And then actually I'm gonna go back over here with some terrain probably going to use the woods. It's a nice dark kind of mud, I would almost say. Uh, minus the bits of grass, but I might throw some soil in that just to make it look a little bit more barren. <laughs> Thought I was done doing terrain, but apparently not. So we'll go ahead and switch to soil and just repaint that like that. That way we'll have a nice flat area. The cart itself is actually needs to be inlaid down a little bit. And so the stop will be a little bit lower. So we'll go a block lower because the cart that, it, that we ride up on is actually going to be one one of these thick and we want it to sit flush with the rest that way we can actually take things on and off without too much trouble and we're also gonna make it a little bit thicker for stability you know we don't want this area breaking because if this area breaks uh, we're gonna be in some trouble there. Might even add some vertical posts just for some reinforcements. There we go. And then last but least some diagonals. Let's also make it look a little bit more interesting and believable. I mean corner braces like this would be necessary I would think. Okay, so the elevator would stop here, you would be able to get off and go on your way. I don't know how I feel about this slope yet. It's a pretty steep angle and if, if people are pushing a cart, I'm afraid I might get away from them at that point. So I might end up having to, I wish they almost had like a, a 1 by 2 slope like they do in Space Engineers. That thing comes in handy a lot for situations like that. Nope, some train sticking out. Have to make sure there's going to be nothing exposed that the elevator will get stuck on because that might have an issue. Let's see. Nope. Okay, we're looking good. Let's zoom out a little bit more, see kind of what we get. Alright, it's not too bad. And here we'll go ahead and just build the top of the crane. And I need a full piece here. And there. Now pro I'm probably using more wooden supports than necessary, but it's it's going to just look better and more believable. Yeah. Need some 
corner pieces. I already kind of have the measurements in my head from the test builds I was doing. So we'll... I'll just quickly assemble this for you guys. I think it needs to be like three taller. Just gotta make sure you have enough height clearance so that you don't hit the top where the rope spindles will be. That actually pull up the lift. That'll be a bad day when that happens. Okay, so we got those. We also need a horizontal brace here. Now see, the nice thing about this, this top part, it kind of mirrors what the cart's going to be. So this shape here is actually going to be the side of the lift. And so I know the measurement of that, and I know it's also going to be one thickness lower than this, so it needs to stop here so people can get on and off smoothly. And so actually I need to make a stop kinda like this. And what this will do is actually kinda lock it when it gets up to the top. It'll lock it in place and prevent it from going any higher. And that'll be a good feature to have. So on this side we need a angled piece. Like so. Yeah, I was having some weird weird glitches with with all these uh pieces in my test world. So hopefully it doesn't transfer too much over here. I mean, I'm fine with it. It just means I can't technically use this until they're resolved but as long as it'll be built it's kind of what I'm going for it doesn't have to be a hundred percent working I mean it will function but I'm sure if I uploaded it to the workshop people would try and roll it up too quickly and it would just break it would just break and that is off OCD is kicking in pretty hard. Just spin that around. I kind of like the Q and E and R uh, rotations that they have. Um, I find them to be a little bit quicker than Space Engineers versions. I mean you still have to use the special keys above the arrow keys every, every now and then to get a, a specific rotation you're looking for. But the Q, Q and R and W not W. Q E R. Those those work pretty nicely, and they're all right there. And they kind of give very quick access for what you're doing. Let's see. So going to need two. So you to make these, you need to give yourself a little bit of a buffer from these rotating blocks here. What, I believe they're called catch blocks, is that right? Yeah, catch blocks. And so basically they're just a, a cutout with a square in the middle. And it just signifies this thing will be rotating within this. And then we'll go ahead and grab our rope drum. I call it a spindle, because it essentially looks the same to me. And we'll go ahead and make sure those are all in place, like so. We're going to need another little buffer block here on each other end and you can actually connect these together and they'll kinda snap into place and now these two are connected and they'll spin together and then these two should now be connected as well then from here will oh, which side do I want the handle to be on? Hmm, it's kinda high. Oh well, okay. So we'll put the handle here and then it'll connect on this side to this one. 
and there's a little bit of a trick you can do to get these to cooperate. You know what, I might make this a little bit bigger. Because if I can make it to, like, turn slower, make it a little heavier, I'm hoping that might solve some of the issue that we have when we turn it too quickly and it hits the side, causing the whole structure to basically implode in a wonderful fashion. So, we had to make two identical, almost, gears at this point. And then we're going to connect rope endings on here. And then, in this fashion, at the end, and you can make these as big or as small as you want. You just have to make sure you can fit four of them. Really, this size here is a, it's about as small as you can get. So we'll go ahead and just connect these up to their matching sides. Like so. And now this, when this turns, it'll turn that in a mirrored fashion. And we'll go ahead and give this a test. Okay. Hmm. Technical difficulties. All right. So let's see if I can't just kind of. No. Don't don't even want to kickstart a little bit. Doing this in third person kind of gets rid of the head bob. It can be really annoying when you're working on these handles. Oh come on. I know you work. I have like a version of you that works just fine. See, see, rotating that spun that side. You just sometimes run into a bit of an issue thinking there's too much weight on here when there definitely isn't. Oh, come on. Please. Okay, I might have to figure this off off camera. What happens if I replace it? No? Still no. Hmm. Hmm. Everything's connected correctly. I mean you can see everything turning. It turns slow, which is nice. This just might be too much weight, and if that's the case, then we need to make it the smaller size version. That'll be an easy, quick fix, because we can actually just attach from what's already there. And get rid of a whole arm. No, let's not do that. Let's please stop. Just okay no that's fine you can just keep alright it, it's gonna be a bit of a longer fix apparently the the game wants to get rid of each arm separately that's cool that's understandable I would want to do the same I guess so we'll go ahead and quickly build this back up down and over and into these commentary is kind of lacking running out of things to say when I'm thinking like this come on connect please And there. That should work. And give that a spin. Nope, doesn't work. Alright, so I reloaded the world and went ahead off camera, making sure everything works. I adjusted these locks, I made them a little bit more narrow. These are acting almost like a half block and kind of cushion the lift. Down here, I loaded in the lift from my other world 
and everything is hooked up and ready to test. So here we go, and I hope everything doesn't explode on me for the umpteenth time. So we'll just go ahead and pull this up here. It's best to uh, do this in third person. You don't get that weird camera bob that you get in first person view. It, it also um, allows you guys to actually see the thing work, which is a two part bonus. So we'll go ahead and just kind of tighten it. There we go. And as you can see, you can get on it. It doesn't sway. It's fairly fluid. And we'll go back up. We'll go ahead and lower it back down. There we go. Down it goes. Oh. If it starts bouncing around too much, it's best to just kind of stop. Because you don't want it to start flying around and taking off. As you can see, I have successfully made a kite. So we'll just keep lowering it down all the way. Like that. And there we have it. We have a working lift. And that'll probably do it for this video. The next one we'll probably work on actually making this whole section a little bit better looking, adding some type of railing system, maybe a roof, uh, making it actually a uniform piece instead of just a concrete pad with some wood on it. And that's it for this one. See you in the next one.